We've had one of the finest seasons in the history of championship basketball at the University of Kansas. 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 The dream is real. Kansas has won the NCAA title. Three seconds. A shot by Jacques. Good. A three-pointer. It's over. What an unbelievable December basketball game. Boy, this was one of the best. Up that floor, LaFrance for a stop. Kansas basketball. For 110 years, KU has set a standard of excellence for programs across the country that some challenge, but none surmount. Five seconds to go. Lucas goes inside the arc, shoots a three. No, he missed it. Rebound on the back. KU wins. Game over. Its tradition-rich program is woven into the very fabric of the game. And its fans and its history are like no other. KU's success is astonishing. And its dominance, well documented. 51 conference championships. 33 All-Americans. Manning on the drive and the slam dunk. 12 U.S. Olympians. And 13 Final Fours. KU wins. Over the Final Four. In 2008, Kansas earned the right to hang yet another banner in historic Allen Fieldhouse as KU captured its third NCAA title and fifth national championship. Jayhawks win it in overtime, 75 to 68, KU national champion. This is the story of the Jayhawks championship season from late night in the fog in Allen Fieldhouse to Mario's miracle at the Final Four in San Antonio. But to truly appreciate the story of Kansas basketball and the 2008 championship season, we should go back to where it all began with a physical education instructor in Springfield, Massachusetts. In the winter of 1891, then PE instructor Dr. James Naismith was asked to come up with an indoor game to occupy students' time between football and baseball. As a former rugby player, Naismith constructed a sport that emphasized passing the ball rather than tackling. Peach baskets were placed above the players' heads for goals, and the game of basketball was born. In 1898, Dr. Naismith was hired by the University of Kansas it was then that he coached KU's first game. Dr. Naismith's coaching tenure came to an end in 1907. The following season, KU hired a former student of Dr. Naismith's, Dr. Forrest Fogg Allen. Dr. Allen went on to coach 39 seasons at KU and captured 590 wins, making him the winningest coach in Kansas history. His KU teams won 24 conference championships. In 1922 and 1923, Kansas won its first two national titles as they were awarded the Helms Foundation National Championship. And in 1952, Dr. Allen's team led by All-American Clyde Lavellet captured its first NCAA title. We've had one of the finest seasons in the history of championship basketball at the University of Kansas. In 1988, under the direction of head coach Larry Brown and the leadership of All-American Danny Manning, Kansas captured its second NCAA title. It's going to happen, it appears, and it comes to Grace. Two seconds, a long shot, no good. It's over. The dream the is Hawks real. Are national champion. The Yay. dream is real. The dream is real. Kansas has won the NCAA title. 
The success of Kansas basketball begins with the eight men who have sat in the head coach's chair over the last 110 years. It has been sustained with the hundreds of young men who have donned the jersey for the crimson and blue. And it is celebrated and magnified to this day by the thousands of loyal Jayhawk fans throughout the world. In 2008, Kansas returned all but one to its roster from the previous season. And a lob, oh. and a stop, one-handed by Jackson, and he's fouled. Destined to return to glory under the direction of head coach Bill Self, the players fought their way to a 37-3 record, the most wins in KU history, and battled their way to the Final Four in San Antonio. And it was here that they forever placed their names amongst the greats. It was here that they provided yet another banner for their home in Allen Fieldhouse. And it was here that they brought Kansas its third NCAA title and fifth national championship. A Kansas comeback for the history books. Rock Chalk Championship. Kansas takes the title. Well, I've been excited about this team in this year ever since uh, the horn sounded against UCLA last year in the Elite Eight game because I knew that this had a chance to be the best team that we've had in large part just due to experience. And then Julian declared for the draft last year, Brandon declared, and, and uh, uh, fortunately for us and unfortunately for Brandon as an injury standpoint, from an injury standpoint, he returned to school. And, and, you know, what a blessing it's been for him and for us for, for him to hurt his knee because he's much better now because of it. And Julian went on, and, 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 and although we, we all miss Julian, there's no question about it, but it opened up some, some areas for some other guys to really have a chance to thrive, and that being, you know, of course, Drell and, and, and Darnell. And so, so uh, it's, it's been good. It's been a great year. We knew we'd be good this year. Uh, we didn't know if we'd be lucky because so much of it is, is timing, but, but certainly we put it all together when it counted the most. It's great to have you back, Russell. How excited are you for this season? I'm very excited. Uh, I'm looking forward to going out, playing hard, leading my teammates to a national championship. Good luck, man. All right. There you go, Russell Robinson. I think all the guys who have arrived now so let's let the party start. Back to you, Nate. Sounds great, Danny. Jayhawk fans, your 2007-2008 Kansas Jayhawk basketball team has arrived. Let's get this 110th year of Kansas basketball started right. From the time that Larry Brown roamed the sidelines of Allen Fieldhouse, Kansas basketball has begun with late night in the fog. It's held as a night to have fun and take in the atmosphere of the greatest opening in college basketball in the country. It also gives the Kansas faithful an opportunity to see their stars of the hardwood in a different setting. With late night behind them, the 2008 season had begun. Expectations were once again high for this Kansas team. The season would start without 2007 All-American Brandon Rush who was recovering from an ACL injury in the offseason. In his place was Roderick Stewart. Once I heard that Brandon was hurting, was going to be out for a while, I just was like, this is my chance, man, just to show people that I belong at KU. When Brandon got hurt and Rod came in and started position, he was real excited about that, and, and he gave us like a huge spark in the end season. Here's Santiago puts up a three, but it's blocked by Russell, taken by Robinson. Now ahead to Stewart for the dunk. Being a starter, coming to KU is something you always dream of. And just for it to happen, even though it happened the way it did, you just got to take advantage of the opportunity when the time comes, and I definitely did. It took little time to get heated up. Kansas opened the season with two big wins over Louisiana Monroe and UMKC. Prior to the game against Washburn, the team suffered another early season setback with the loss of Sharon Collins due to foot surgery. However, the game featured the return of Brandon Rush. Here comes Brandon Rush into the KU lineup, along with four new Ichabods. And listen to the crowd and the hand for Brandon. Rush played 12 minutes, connecting on three of five from the field. Into Rush, in the lane. He got it! There's his first bucket of the year. 
The following game, the Jayhawks defeated Northern Arizona and earned the 600th win in Allen Fieldhouse. In late November, Kansas had its first true test of the season. The Arizona Wildcats entered the Fieldhouse, commemorating the first annual Big 12 Pac-10 Series. The game stayed close throughout. Four Jayhawks scored in double figures, including Roderick Stewart, who contributed 13. Stewart up the court for... Oh! He stuffed it on Bayless! Darrell Arthur led the team with 20, and in only his second game back from injury, Brandon Rush scored 17. With seconds remaining in the contest, the game was just inches away from staying out of overtime. Rebound Rush! One second! Half-court shot! And the reason I said then I'm glad it went into overtime, you know, naturally because we won, we need to play five more minutes in, uh, against a quality team that where every possession mattered because we, didn't, we, hadn't played, we hadn't played any games where the possessions were magnified at all. So that was good for us. Hey, you with the ball. Stewart going inside. Scored! He's fouled! Brielmeyer got it. And a steal! Brandon Rush up the court for the dunk. How about Brandon Rush? by six, and in overtime, Kansas 76, Arizona 72. Two games later, Kansas traveled to Los Angeles for a game against 22nd ranked USC. It was KU's first road test of the season. Standing in their way was standout freshman O.J. Mayo. Yeah, all the hype was definitely on O.J. Mayo, and, and that was kind of good for us, you know, it took all the pressure off for us. And, and, it just gave us a challenge, you know, it was a challenge to go out and stop OJ and, and that team, and that was a very good team. Yeah, that was a good game, you know, coming to that game, there was a lot of hype about Kansas versus OJ Mayo, and uh, I mean, I think our whole our whole game plan was just not let him get going, and I think Russell did a great job of that. Now here's Mayo in the lane, knocked away, taken by KU, three on two, Robinson pull up three, good, he hit it! The game went back and forth throughout both halves. KU fans were in store for another nail biter as the game came down to the wire again. With just seconds remaining in the contest, Kansas had the ball ahead by two. Roderick Stewart out to Chalmers, a long three. He had it! Way out there! A three-pointer by Chalmers! Mario's shot sealed the victory for KU, and the Hawks came out of Los Angeles with a four-point win. From there, Kansas won their next eight consecutive games. And a lob, and a stop, one-handed by Jackson, and he's fouled. What gets him up here at Allen Fieldhouse? Yeah, we was on a roll. We weren't losing one game. Everybody's on, on the same tempo, same beat. A moment ago, he was up two. This is a 14-1 run. Steal by Robinson. Ahead to Roderick for the stop. The Hawks are cooking. Timeout. The ball. Good team play and great defense were key ingredients in KU's run. And with the return of Sharon Collins to the team, the Jayhawks had all the pieces they needed for a dream season. Jump pass out to Collins for a three. Got it! There's Sharon Collins with a three-pointer. Oh, welcome back. Kansas went on a tear with wins over DePaul in Ohio. Jeremy. Can't score, but oh, oh, here comes the man from the Twin Cities, Cole Aldridge, to jam it in there. The Jayhawks took two games on the road over Georgia Tech. Oh, oh, jammed oh, in there by Mario Chalmers. And Boston College. Here comes Mario and to Jackson to the dunk. What a pass by Mario. Kansas continued its dominance over Miami, Yale, and Loyola. The Jayhawks finished the non-conference season undefeated, 15-0 for the first time since the 1990 season, and only the fifth time in KU history. Kansas was beating teams handily, and doing so as a team. I mean, that was our, our thing the whole year. I mean, the pie is big enough for everybody. Uh, basically what that means to us is uh, there's no one person, no person is going to get all the glory for just one thing that they do. It's going to take all of us together as a team, and uh, we all bought into that concept, and it worked out. Guys sacrificed a lot, you know. We, we could have, you know, the All-Americans and, you know, high point scorers and all that. And uh, but I think guys sacrificed for the sake of the team. And uh, we play best when everybody's playing well. And uh, that's what worked for us. And uh, that's what we continue to do all season. We had a bunch of real good players, real good players, 
And what I've stressed all along with these guys is, hey, we're, you're, we're much harder to guard if you have to defend all five spots. Uh, we'll have different leading scores most every night, depending on how teams want to de defend us. And, you know, like you said, the pie is big enough for everybody if, if we're successful. So we did not have the makeup for, for, for postseason accolades individually, but we had a makeup to win the most important games. KU opened up conference play on January 12th in Lincoln, Nebraska. Four Jayhawks scored in double figures, including Brandon Rush with 19, who hit his first four attempts from beyond the three-point line. Out to Rush for a guarded three. He hit it! Brandon Rush is smoking! The Jayhawks continued to tear through Big 12 play with wins over Oklahoma in the Fieldhouse and Missouri on the road. Two on one, Robinson to Rush for the jam! The Hawks next defeated Iowa State at home. Kansas was led by senior forward Darnell Jackson. Dumps it off to Jackson for the slam. Jackson scored 21 points in the contest and pulled down 11 rebounds. It was his first double-double of the season and the fifth of his career. Kansas hosted Nebraska just three days later. The second-ranked Jayhawks defeated Nebraska by 35 while holding Nebraska's big man Alex March to zero points. KU improved at 20-0 for the third time in school history and the first time since opening the 1996-97 season. I thought the league was very good and uh, of course we got a, off to a great start in the league going to Nebraska and playing well and, and playing well against Oklahoma and playing well against Missouri. I think we're our first three so we got off to a good start but, but we also hit a, hit, a, hit a rut where we didn't play as well but in all honesty I kind of expected something like that to happen because when you're playing quality opponents and you're not quite your very best, you're going to get beat in this league. And one quality opponent was Kansas State. Well, you know, we've been rolling through the season. You know, we've been rolling over teams. And, uh, we knew we were going to lose eventually, but we didn't, we didn't think it would be against K-State. And uh, we just came in, they had a great environment. You know, it starts with a line for them, and uh, they played really well that game. The Wildcats were led all season by freshman sensation Michael Beasley. For the first time ever in Bramwich Coliseum, and after 24 consecutive losses at home to KU, Kansas State came out on top. Two games later, Kansas had a chance to defeat its biggest rival, Missouri, for the second time of the season. The border showdown brought its usual unique atmosphere to the fieldhouse, and the crowd was as boisterous as ever. KU's first two buckets of the contest set the tone for the game. Out to Rush, a three, swish! Here come the Hawks. Rush goes inside, over to Arthur, for a jam! Five to nothing, KU! Five Jayhawks scored in double figures as Kansas defeated Missouri for the fifth time in a row. Kansas won by 19, 90-71. Kansas next defeated Baylor at home, 100-90. The Jayhawks reached the century mark without the benefit of a single three-point basket. In fact, it was the first time in 271 games that KU played a game without a three-pointer. Collins to Jackson for the jam! Kansas next lost on the road to 11th-ranked Texas before returning home for a matchup against Colorado. The Jayhawks won handily over the Buffaloes, 69-45. A lob into Ron Arthur for the backhand slam. The game was highlighted by the return of 200 former men's basketball coaches, players, and managers. They were honored at halftime as part of Kansas's celebration of 110 years of Jayhawk basketball. The halftime celebration also paid special tribute to the 1988 national championship team. That evening, the former and current Jayhawks met to celebrate both their time at KU and the rich history of the program. The banquet that night was uh, pretty remarkable because several players spoke from each generation and, and, and talked about what it meant for them to be there and what it meant to wear the uniform. And you'll look back, you know, later in life and realize what a privilege it was to do it. And you're never going to have more fun. And I do think it hit home with our guys. I was in awe, you know, just, just to see how much they loved Kansas basketball and how much they put into it. And, you know, so far down the line that they, they still have that feeling towards Kansas basketball and still want to be a part of everything. It's, it's amazing. Being able to see all the people that played at KU, all the people that left a legacy and left a tradition, uh, 
just being able to be around them, actually meet them guys, it was great. It was a great experience for everybody. It was a great weekend. We, we end up winning 69 to 45. And I remember that score and I won't remember any other ones because that was an important, important game for us. And I remember telling Coach Brown after the game, and I said, God, we didn't play very good. He said, Bill, your kids did everything you asked them to do. They defended exactly the way you wanted to defend. You know, you did good. And I was like going, you know, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to, you don't, you don't have to, to, to be anything other than just try your best and have guys carry out assignments. And, we were just going through a little bit of a funk, so it came at a good time. And, and then all those ex-players repeatedly told our guys, this is a team that can do it. And nothing would make us more happy as old timers is to see you get it done. But before they could get it done, Kansas would experience one more setback. The setback would come in the immediate game in Stillwater. After the Oklahoma State game, we're sitting there talking as a group and I said uh, because we've been through a lot as a team we had deaths we had murders we've had a lot of things happen and and I asked our guys you know what they were doing to help each other and have they had a players only meeting and have they had they taken you know Darnell or Rod out to dinner and made sure their mind was right have they had they sacrificed themselves at all to help our team and, and our guys said well we talk a little bit in the locker room we, we haven't had any team meetings and my response to me to them was I'm so disappointed because I you guys had me fooled, I thought you cared. We wanted to kind of get a feel for what other guys were thinking and, and, and what they thought we needed to do. Because you know, we hear from the coaches, you know, we hear from the media, and we wanted to hear from ourselves. And like, like uh, I think it would help to, to know what Darrell's thinking or, or Brandon's thinking, because you know, they don't talk a whole lot. So, so that's, what, that's what the meeting was for, basically. And we all just said, guys, we can't lose anymore. And like, if we want to do something real big this year, we have to buckle down and everybody needs to bring something. I don't know if a lot was accomplished, but they were together and they had a chance to talk and visit and, you know, they should be able to tell each other, hey, I'm not happy with you, I don't like your attitude, I don't like how you handle the press, or, or, or you need to give us more in this area, or, or, or coach is telling us this, but you're not buying into it. They, they should talk those things out because, and police themselves. And I don't know exactly what transpired during that meeting, but it was obviously positive because from that point forward, we really put it together. Kansas won their next two games, notching wins over Iowa State and Kansas State at home. He drained it! With the attention of the nation on KU's campus, the Jayhawks took revenge on the Wildcats. A lob into Jackson for the jam! Collins pull up three. Racket! He knocked it in there! Kansas defeated Kansas State 88-64 while improving its overall record to 26-3. The win also moved the Hawks into a tie with Texas for first place in the conference. With two games remaining on the schedule, the stage was set for the final game of the year in Allen Fieldhouse and the final home game for five seniors. This group's seniors have, have won seven Big 12 championships, four, uh, four regular seasons and three conference tournaments out of a possible of eight. They won 118 games playing against the best competition in the country. And no McDonald's All-Americans, just some hard-nosed kids that came here and sacrificed and, and really made themselves good players. And, and the guys behind them that we've recruited have been probably our stars, but these guys have been the foundation. Running out to 16-3 every game, you know, uh, just one of those feelings that you just can't put into words, but uh, it's just uh, amazing. With emotions running high for the starting five, the Jayhawks seniors look to finish their season 20-0 and at home. Standing in their way was Texas Tech, the Red Raiders, under the leadership of first-year coach Pat Knight, were in for a long evening. Not the case for a three. Swish! He drained it. His second one. At halftime, Kansas was up by 25, 51 to 26. Lobs it behind his back, up over his head to Arthur, who has a big smile after scoring. Throughout the second half, the lead continued to grow. In front of a national television audience, the Jayhawks poured on a primetime punishment of Texas Tech, leaving the Red Raiders with the worst defeat in the history of their program. Here comes Stewart for three. Oh, no. He oh, hit it. No. Oh, 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 my. By the time the final horn sounded, Kansas posted its most points in 194 games by a final score of 109 to 51. The 58 point margin tied for the seventh largest in school history. 15 of the 16 Jayhawks who played for KU scored in the game, including all five seniors. Kansas finished the 07-08 season undefeated at home. 
I was nervous. I, I was so nervous, you know. That was the first time I uh, started. And uh, I was trying to trying to not be nervous, and I was trying to hold my emotions back, and it all just came together. So uh, it, it was I was pretty exhausted the first five minutes of the game. You know, when I hit my first three, it was I, it was I was kind of relieved because it took me a couple shots to get it down, and uh, and then from then on, I just I just knew every shot was going to go in. It was a great feeling. I mean, uh, I had goosebumps throughout the whole time. I think that's the loudest I ever heard it on Saturday night. Uh, it, it was so loud that when Coach Up brought us in the huddle, we couldn't hear him, and, and so finally he just started throwing up sign languages for us to run plays and it was so loud and it was great. The fans were great and, and I just tried to hold my emotions in because I knew that I'd never get this chance again to run out the tunnel. I thought to myself, you know, gosh, I, I wish my mom could be here for this. I'm you know, going to try my best, you know, to make sure that she is here for this moment because it was, it was a pretty cool time and, you know, that kind of dream came true. You know, she, was, she had a chance you know, to come over and be here for the last, you know, semester of my senior year and for the you know, games and stuff like that, and especially for senior night, and I, I thought she had a blast. Well, you know, senior night, I wasn't even thinking about the game. I was more concerned about, you know, not stuttering on my speeches and not forgetting people in my speeches. But, uh, but it was fun, you know, and uh, I just had had a had a had a great game, obviously. But uh, it was just the experience was more than it was better than anything, and I'm uh, just happy to have my parents in the stands. We had five seniors that, man, love KU more than anything in the world. It's been the greatest years of my life, man. I'll never forget this place. I don't care what I do in life. This has been the best part, chapter of my life so far. For y'all, man, I probably wouldn't even stay at KU. Just transferring from Southern California, just not knowing where I wanted to go. But I remember the night I came on, on my recruiting trip here, it just like it was the best thing ever. Just the fans. So I'm gonna just let y'all know from the bottom of my heart, y'all the reason that I chose KU. And the best thing is, is my teammates. I mean, I got great teammates that care about me. I care about them, and and we've been through a lot. Boot camp, crying, people not being able to make their times. It just brought us so much tighter. And, and and we're going to do a lot of great things this year. When I had a chance to come to America, I was like 16 years old, and uh, I'm the only one in the family, you know, she's a single mom, and uh, for a mom to let her son go at that age, you know, to another country, not just to another city or state or whatever, I think it was a pretty difficult decision, but, you know, she stuck with it, she thought it was the best thing for me, and uh, I'm pretty sure she's proud of it right now, and uh, thank you, Mom, I love you. Last week, I want to thank the most important people for the rest of the stretch of our season, and that's you, the fans. I just wanted to let, let you guys know that as we enter this last stretch, you guys are going to be the most important part of us being able to, to perform. And hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, we can be back here in a couple weeks having another great speech. I told my teammates that I wasn't going to cry, but it's so hard. Coach Selm, Coach Thomas flew home, and I, I was I was ready to give it all up. And and when Coach Selm gave me that hug, I never had that that foggy feeling in my life just to put their arms around me, embrace me. I, I just feel safe. Oh, this is my home, and the fans y'all great. This is so it's amazing. I'm always gonna come back here. This is my home. schedule, Kansas traveled to College Station, Texas. The Texas A&M Aggies were coached by a familiar face. In his first season, former Kansas guard Mark Turgeon was at the helm and held a season record of 22 and 8. Bill Self was sitting with a record of 27 and 3. With a win, Self's Jayhawks could clinch their fourth consecutive regular season conference championship. The Jayhawks took little time to score. And we are underway. The opening tip won by Kansas. Robinson, a lob inside, and a shot knocked in by Darrell Arthur. Nice start. Darrell Arthur and Mario Chalmers each pumped in 16 points to lead all scores in the contest. 
five players scored in double figures, including Brandon Rush with 10. Left side, Robinson into Rush for the jam and a foul. He went up over Brian Davis for that stop. Count the basket. With seconds remaining in the contest, it became evident. KU would win its fourth regular season conference championship in a row. Hey, gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to present to you class act, great competitors, but you guys do it with great class and sportsmanship. I'm proud you're our champions. I want to present to you the Big 12 Championship Trophy. Yeah! Yeah! These seniors go out with their fourth conference championship, number 51 in history for Kansas, and a lot more basketball to be played. Before we go into every season, at every practice, when we close practice, we always say Big 12 champs. Always. And, and I always think it plant, plants that subliminal seed that this is what we have to get to. Because if we're the best in our league, we'll have a chance to play for the highest of stakes. And this year, we changed I started saying national champs every day just to try to plant that seed that, hey, we, we got to strive for higher. Because I thought maybe I had, I had been sending the wrong message. Uh, and then we start in the league and we lose three games in the league. And I said, to heck with national champs. If we're not the best in our league, you know, we're not going to have a great chance for it. So we went back to saying Big 12 champs. And I really think. Maybe I'm wrong, but I really think changing the focus and saying, no, we, 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 we got to be the best in our league, I do think it may have helped our team a little bit. So I think it meant more to win at A&M because I think their focus was back to being the best in our league. And even though we tied Texas, you know, Texas beat us at their place, and they had a fabulous team. Uh -uh. We tied Texas, but I, I do think it, it kind of put us in the moment better. And then, uh, and then, of course, going to the Big 12 tournament, in our mind, that was a chance where we could actually decide who the best was. And we've said that to our team all the time. Hey, now we get a chance to really figure this thing out. The newly opened Sprint Center in Kansas City, Missouri was the setting for this year's Big 12 tournament. As the number two seed in the tournament, Kansas was matched up against Nebraska on the second day of play. Kansas struggled getting out of the gates. Jayhawks went into halftime trailing 27-22. But the game was a tale of two halves. Kansas opened the second half on an 18-6 run. Knocked away, Chalmers. Knocked it away, Robinson. Back to Chalmers. Chalmers to Darnell, who laid it in. Hey, there's a good start to the second half. Kansas defeated Nebraska for the 21st time in its last 22 attempts, dating back to 1999. The Jayhawks won by 10, 64-54. One week after facing Texas A&M to seal the Big 12 regular season crown, Kansas faced the Aggies once again in the tournament semifinal matchup. Playing in his hometown of Kansas City, the game belonged to Brandon Rush. Over to Rush for a three. Swish, he got it. Collins ahead to Rush. Rush against Jones. He slushed it with the right hand. Rush finished the game with a career-high 28 points, shooting 9 of 13 from the field and 5 of 8 from the three-point line. Rush answers at the other end. Rush's shooting performance led the Jayhawks throughout the contest as KU shot over 50% from the field. Head by two with just seconds remaining, Russell Robinson sealed the Aggies' fate. Left side to Robinson. Rush trying to go in that lane. Robinson in the lane now for a layup. He got it. He took it all the way to the goal. And the Hawks are up by four. Kansas won 77-71, sending the Jayhawks into the championship game for the seventh time in the history of the Big 12 tournament. The win also gave KU a 30-win season for only the eighth time in its storied program. Looking to secure its third conference tournament trophy in a row, KU would face a familiar foe in the Texas Longhorns. I think that's our biggest rival in the Big 12. I mean, not taking anything away from Missouri and K-State, but I think when it comes to basketball-wise, it's Texas that's our biggest rival. Playing at Sprint Center close to home, you know, and uh, Sprint Center is new, great arena. We like that arena, and uh, we were just ready to go out there and play in front of our fans. You know, we played against a great Texas team, you know, in a, in a good game, and, uh, you know, it was one of those games that you just love to be a part of. 
For the third time in as many seasons, the Big 12 Tournament Championship Final came down to Kansas and Texas. And for the third time in three years, those in attendance were in store for one of the most captivating games of the year. Out to Chalmers, guarded three, swish! Hawks are on the board. The first half of the contest featured three red-hot players, KU's Brandon Rush and Mario Chalmers, and Texas's DJ Augustine, who all together shot for a combined 13 of 17 beyond the three-point line. It was a Texas shootout in Kansas City. They get it on the perimeter to Rush. Three-pointer goes down. Here's Rush for a three. Got it from the left wing. 2-3 zone by Texas, and over the zone, Chalmers shoots in a three from the left side. The contest was a back and forth affair as Texas and Kansas exchanged leads 14 times. Texas came out fast to an 8-3 lead, then Kansas went on a 10-0 run. Missed, rebound KU, Chalmers, full court off Arthur for the jam! What a beautiful pass by Chalmers and finished by Arthur. Trailing 27-21, Texas responded with a 14-0 run to gain the lead again. The Jayhawks entered the locker room at halftime, trailing 46-45. The second half was a different story. Rush continued his sharpshooting, hitting two of two from beyond the three-point line. Man, what a flurry of action. Rush from the corner. Bingo! He got another one. While Chalmers went three of six. Over the zone, Chalmers buries another one, another three-pointer. He is seven out of nine. And a strong defensive effort left Augustine scoreless from the field. With the game still very much in doubt and four minutes remaining, the Jayhawks began to pull away for their third conference tournament title in a row. Here's Rush. Rush goes into the lane, plays out to Chalmers for a three. Got it! Around and good! Chalmers at 28. Augustine. Augustine plows into that lane. Bad pass. Stolen by Chalmers. Chalmers ahead to rush. And now backcourt foul on Texas with 40.1 to go. Co-champs of the regular season. Champs of the postseason. Now it's on to the NCAA. What a win for KU. The victory gave KU its sixth Big 12 tournament title. For the second time in his career, Mario Chalmers was named to the Big 12 Championship All-Tournament team. The honor was due in large part to connecting on 8 of 12 from beyond the three-point line and scoring 30 points in the contest, tying the KU individual record for most points in a tournament game. Brandon Rush hit six of nine three-point attempts. He finished with 19 points. Rush picked up all tournament team honors as well and was named the tournament's most outstanding player. The guys, the, the level that they were playing on that night was, was unbelievable. I mean, Mario going off for 30 and, and Brandon barely missing a shot. It, it, they played on a, uh, another level that, you know, we haven't played on in a long time. We came out there that day, uh, got a good shoot around, got a couple of extra shots up in uh, just that game. I was filled it the whole day, Brandon was filled it the whole day. You know, it was just unstoppable that day. Well, it was a fabulous game. There, there, there wasn't five better played basketball games in the country this year than that one, and that may have been the, the best. We couldn't stop them. They couldn't stop us. Both teams shot 55, 65 percent in the first half, and, and many people said it's the best half of basketball played in Kansas City since the first half of the 88 championship game when it was knotted at 50, you know, OU Kansas. It's a fabulous game, and, and to see us go on runs, they went on runs, you know, we're up seven, they were up six. It was just back and forth the whole time. But the last four minutes, our guys put it together. And I, I do think that gave us great confidence. Uh, we had to play a really good a and team and, and play very well the night before. But I think that gave us great confidence going into the tournament. Ah, three in a row, baby. Three. three in a row, baby. The team hot off their latest conference championship had little time to breathe before finding out its seating in the NCAA tournament. Within an hour after their victory over Texas, the team and family gathered to watch the NCAA selection show. <laughs> KU's first stop in the tournament was Omaha, Nebraska. For the eighth time in its storied program, Kansas entered the NCAA tournament as a number one seed. 
Their opponent was 16th seeded Portland State. Well, the first weekend is the hardest weekend. You know, that first game is always the hardest game because they're pumping it up and you got the fact that 16 never beat a one seed and you got all that, you know, drama. Boston in the lane and it deflected, saved by Chalmers. Robinson, baseball's to Arthur for a slam. Wow. Kansas put all worries to rest within just minutes of the opening tip. The Jayhawks hit Portland State early and often. They jumped out to a 19-7 lead. KU's red-hot three-point shooting continued into the tournament as Kansas can 12 three-pointers in the game, tying for the second most by a KU team in an NCAA tournament game. Kansas advanced to the second round of the Big Dance to the tune of a 24-point win, 85-61. I think the Portland State game was more nervous for me, and I didn't share this with our team, except I did tell them, hey guys, these, these, these guys aren't a 16 seed, and, and I watched a lot of tape. I watched more tape on Portland State than I did, you know, Carolina and Memphis. I was really impressed with their team, but our team came out and made shots and played great early, and when we did that, everybody relaxed. Mario plays over to Collins. Collins against Terry. Collins into that lane. Oh, 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 oh. Pulled by the whole building and laid it in. Kansas continued its dominance in the second round of the tournament against UNLV. For the second game in a row, four KU players scored in double figures. But the KU defense was the story of the game. As the running Rebels were held to under 27% shooting from the field, the lowest of any KU opponent throughout the season. In fact, Kansas held UNLV to only four second-half field goals. Kansas won the contest 75-56. There you have it, on to Motown for the Sweet 16. You know, we go to Detroit and really a unique setting, you know, with the, with the, with the arena, the way it was set up, and it was, it was, you know, it was new to everybody. Uh, that many people, fans being that away, far away from you, being up on a stage, you know, it wasn't the perfect deal because you like to go into a situation and having coached or played in that type of environment before, and of course nobody had on any team. So you don't, you don't know about the shooting backgrounds. One thing to shoot in front of 41,000, another thing to shoot in front of 75,000. For the second straight season and the 25th time in school history, Kansas was in the Sweet 16. Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan provided a unique setting for collegiate basketball, elevated floors, and a football field configuration made for an unforgettable experience. Also unforgettable was KU's ability to play above the rim against the 12th seeded Villanova Wildcats. A lob inside to Jackson for the flush. Stolen by Jackson. Jackson ahead to Robinson. Robinson up the court. To rush for the rush flush. Long look, plays it into Durrell for a slammer right by the basket. Kansas got up early on the Wildcats as the Jayhawks led by 19 at intermission. Villanova could not get closer than 12 in the second half as KU coasted to a 72-57 win. But we played so good against Villanova that first half. I mean, I don't know what we were up, but we were up 20 or whatever in the first half against Villanova. Played great and everybody contributed. And then we traded baskets the second half. And, and it set up, a, obviously, a, a big game against America's darling, Davidson, which they should have been America's darling because they, they played at such a high level and, and kind of stole the imagination of everybody. And here we were, a team that's been to three Elite Eights in the last five years, and you know our guys feel like nobody wants us to win, which is about the case, except for people supporting Kansas. With over 57,000 fans in attendance, Kansas and Davidson took center stage in Detroit. The Jayhawks were playing in their 19th Elite Eight. To advance to their 13th Final Four, they would have to get through the 10th seeded Davidson Wildcats. Davidson was led by sophomore sharpshooter Stephen Curry, who was averaging more than 34 points a game in the tournament. Against Kansas, Curry was held to 25 points off 9 of 25 shooting and 4 of 16 from beyond the three-point line. Yet both teams went on their respective runs, and both teams held leads throughout the contest. Collins pushing it up the floor. Collins to Jackson for the jam! For Kansas, three players scored in double figures, but none was more impressive than senior center Sasha Khan. If you go back and look at the game against Davidson, Sharon made a couple of huge plays. Mario and, and, and Russell and Brandon. And, Shady and darn it, just solid, solid at best, you know. But Sasha, you know, he was six and six and, and, and uh, from the field and, 
uh, was a presence. You know, he controlled that. He controlled the interior on both ends. And, and I couldn't really sleep the, the night before. I was, you know, up just so excited about the game. You know, and I knew last year we kind of, you know, didn't perform as well as we could have, I guess. And I was just, you know, trying to my my best to make sure that we, you know, perform at 100 percent and you know have the chance of going to the final four and kind of not miss on that and, and stuff. And I was just really fired up before the game and I think just my energy level just took me to you know to my performance and that was just kind of an outcome of that and I mean I was just you know feeling great and energy was fine and just things went right that night and it was just a, you know just a great game. With just under a minute to play Khan and the Jayhawks were up by five but again Davidson fought back. Richards to throw it in to Curry puts up a three got it. Boy that broke the drought. He shot that one right through the basket. With 16 seconds left, KU was up by two, and the ball was in Davidson's hands. Curry brings it up against Rush. Down to 10 seconds. Here's Curry. Curry against Rush. Left side he goes. Rush falls down. Chalmers takes him. Four seconds. Three, two, one. There's a shot. No good. Jayhawks win it. KU goes to the final four. The last second off balance shot didn't go, and KU wins. For the 13th time in school history, Kansas was going to the Final Four. But for head coach Bill Self, it would be his first. Coach Self has, has fought just as hard as we have, you know, trying to get us to play hard and, and going through all the, uh, all the upsets and things that we went through, you know, throughout, the, throughout his years here. Uh, it felt great doing that for him. And that was like one of the main things for everybody that they wanted to do that for Coach Self, and we did. And he came in the locker room, teary-eyed, and, uh, and, and he just gave us a great speech. And, and he just told us, now, we, now we're one of the number one seeds going to the Final Four, and, and let's come back, back to Kansas with a, with a national championship. Back in Kansas, the KU faithful awaited their hero's return. While the town of Lawrence celebrated another Final Four appearance. And in Allen Fieldhouse, the KU fans awaited their Jayhawks into the wee hours of the night. We're very happy to be here right now. We just know that we're not satisfied. And I see you guys in San Antonio. Texas, the setting for the 2008 Final Four. A Final Four that for the first time in NCAA history consisted of four number one seeds. UCLA, Memphis, North Carolina, and Kansas all arrived in San Antonio days in advance to prepare for their upcoming games. But the day before Kansas would face North Carolina in the semifinals, the Jayhawks would experience a setback. That's something that everybody grows up, grows up to dreaming of doing. And, uh, 
for him for him to be so close and get hurt like that on the, on the day before the game, I know it really hurt him. That was the hardest thing ever. Just you work your whole life, man, just for that one moment, and like for it to be taken away from me the way that it was. It's an unfortunate situation, but I kind of took it as a positive. I think like the guys use me as motivation. Every time the game got tough, and they just look over at me, man, and they just see me over there smiling. I'm just a guy that keeps a smile on my face, no matter how much I go through. And I think they use me as motivation when it really got tough. With the motivation from an injured teammate and the motivation of playing the number one team in the country, Kansas prepared itself to take on former coach Roy Williams' North Carolina team, led by the National Player of the Year and Tyler Hansbro. Well, you know, once you get to the Final Four, all the pressure's off. And uh, I think for us, you know, there's no more pressure. You know, we made it to the Final Four and, uh, you know, we're playing against a good North Carolina team, one you know team that we wanted to play all year. We've been watching all year. So once we got there, there was no, it was no pressure. We could just go out there and play our game, and that's what we did. Goes without saying how proud we are and how happy we are for you and how much we appreciate your efforts all, all year long to get to San Antonio. But getting here was tough, wasn't it? And the pressure we felt getting here wasn't deserved. But it's because the pressure of Kansas has been in three elite, eight, elite eights the last five years, and we ain't gotten here yet. And we felt that last week in a little bit, but still yet we prevailed. All right, this week you guys have handled it great. There's absolutely no pressure. This is the week we relax and go have fun. My challenge to you tonight is you have as much fun playing as I have coaching. And if you do that, we're going to have a great time. I guarantee you that. We're playing a very good team, a team with great history, great tradition. You know what? They're playing a very, very good team and a program with unbelievable history and tradition. You came to Kansas to play in this game. You can't hope good things happen tonight. You expect them to happen, and they will, okay? Go out and relax best you can, and know it's a long game, and know there's going to be some ancient moments, and enjoy every second of it, guys. You deserve it. But always remember, as Coach Lombardi said, the most competitive men love the most competitive games. And this is one of those times. This is one of those games. And we all know how competitive you are. All right? I expect this to be a big celebration in here in about two and a half hours. Everybody got that? KU will go left to right. We are across from the KU bench. Referee Tony Green puts it up. KU wins the toss. Chalmers has it. Hawks go to work, into Darrell Arthur against Hansbro. Turnaround, good, and the Hawks are on the board. Well, you like to see that right off the bat. Right side, Stevenson, out front, Hansbro against Sasha. Hansbro leans, blocked by Sasha, taken by Rush. Rush to the other end for the layup. He got it. Jayhawks ball, 25 on the shot clock. There's Chalmers in rhythm, out front of jumper. He drained it, a three-pointer. The Hawks are cooking, 31 to 10. Darrell Arthur, he turns, puts up a shot, crawls off. Aldrich beats Hansborough to the ball. How Goes about that? Out, can't score, but he's fouled. There's the freshman out hustling the All American right there. What a job by Cole Aldrich. Rebound for him and Rush. Rush ahead to Robinson. Robinson up that court. Over to Rush for a three. Swish! Oh my goodness! 38 to 12, Kansas! That was a hungry team to start that game, and, and probably, probably as well as I've seen a team play, not just my own uh, team, uh, as well as I've seen a team play for 15 minutes in a championship type setting like that. Because we just listen to ESPN and all those guys, and uh, we can't run with North Carolina, we can't stop Laws, and we can't stop Hansborough. But I guess I hope they didn't get caught up in that hype because they have to remember they had to stop us too, and that's what we did. We brought it at them, and I guess that's. What, what slapped him in the face because they didn't know we were going to come at him like that. Well, I was, you know, I'm trying to catch my breath, you know. Uh, it, was, it was one of those things where it was a lot of energy, you know, being exhausted up and down the court. And the both teams were playing well. They just missed shots and, you know, we knocked down shots. And it was, it was one of those things that you knew that you're playing against North Carolina, they're going to come back eventually. You know, we're, we're on the bench and, and I'm like going, hey, we're on a roll. We, we, we got we to gotta keep the... We got we got to keep the, the accelerator on. You know we got we got to keep the we got to keep pushing on the gas because even though it's 40 to 12, I didn't anticipate it being four, but you knew they were going to make a run. Rush is 
Went way off on some shots this half. A steal. Carolina's got it. Here they come to Lawson. Shot blocked. Hansbro's got it. He will score. And one. He's fouled. Over on the sideline, KU's head coach kept the players confident. Once the game got closed, you can see where that toughness came, that coach self toughness came in. He let everybody know that we don't have any pressure on us. He stayed calm, you know, didn't, didn't get riled up. You know, he just said, take a deep breath, relax, and we're okay. You know, he just stayed calm, and I, I was very impressed with that. With the lead cut to four, Kansas regrouped. And just as the Tar Heels had slowly chipped away at the lead, the Jayhawks started to extend their lead once again. And the 14 on the shot clock. Collins heads to the lane, lobs it in to Sasha for the jam. Well, that's an igniter. There's Chalmers, jump pass over to Rush. Rush shoots a lob in to Darnell for a stuff. Minute 50 to go. There come the Jayhawks, and KU fans are up. Rush left side, down the baseline, layup, good! With a minute remaining in the contest, it became evident KU would advance to the national championship game. One minute to play. One minute from Monday. Five seconds to go. Three seconds. Two seconds. One second. We'll see you Monday. KU at Memphis for the national title. The Jayhawks have just beaten North Carolina 84 to 66. It came out with me, a lot of people. It's what every, every team's been doing. So they did, a, they did a particularly good job of it. And uh, I don't think I had you know, played, played the best, but you know, they, they played real good deep. Well, congratulations to uh, Kansas. It's a great thrill to be able to play for the national championship, and they deserve it. Uh, early in the game, they were much more aggressive than we were, and we sort of came out a little more casual than we like to and they hit us right between the eyes. Since the tournament started, uh, a lot of guys have been talking about this and Coach Shelf, he's been doing a great job in helping us to stay focused and, and telling us not to be satisfied. And we've been playing playing so hard as a team and together and not playing selfish and, and now we got an opportunity to make, to make history at uh, Kansas. Growing up as a young kid, you always just watch those games and dream about being in those moments like that. And uh, actually being there in my first national championship game was a dream come true. With a school record 36 wins, Kansas had advanced to the national championship game. To win it all, the Jayhawks would have to defeat a talented Memphis team that had lost only one game all season. Before the game, Coach Bill Self gathered his team for one final message. First of all, thank you, this is serious, thank you for the ride. Because as a coach, this is a coach's dream. And I don't think any staffs have more fun than what we've had coaching you guys. You guys have had an unbelievable year. The winningest team in Kansas basketball history. Think about that. You are the winningest team in Kansas basketball history. Nobody can ever take that from you. Nobody. So if they can't take that from you, basically, we got nothing to lose tonight. Nothing but we got so much to gain. We got so much to gain. And the reason I feel so confident about us winning is because we don't have to change one bit who we are. For 39 games, you displayed how hard you're gonna play, you displayed how you're gonna guard, you displayed how you're gonna rebound, and you displayed how we're gonna steal extra possessions. All we gotta do is be ourselves. okay? Go have fun. Ask, you can ask Danny about this. Every day, most every day, if not every day, for the rest of your life, you will be reminded or think of this night. And I want to thank you in advance right now for the great memories it's going to be. Let's go have some fun. With two number one seeds battling for the national title, the game lived up to its billing. It's going to be festive. Well, it should be. It's the national championship. Inside Arthur for the jam. Darrell Arthur flushes it. Left side now to Rose. Fadeaway jumper. He hit it. And one. He called a foul. There's a lob into Sasha for the slam dunk. 
Hawks were down early, 9-3. There's a steal to the other end. Dorsey for the jam. Rebound to Collins of KU. Smallest guy on the court. They had to rush. Rush into oh. Arthur for a dunk. What a pass and what a catch by Darrell Arthur. The Jayhawks entered the locker room at halftime with a five-point lead, 33-28. to 28. We're 20 minutes away. 20 minutes away, you can't wish it to happen. You got to go make it happen, though. You got to keep making plays. You got to keep pushing it. Obviously, my message wasn't wasn't very strong because we come out and we don't even touch the ball in this tie game. So they scored five straight points without us ever getting possession of the ball. So I, obviously, my message wasn't very good. Here's Anderson out front, out by Chalmers in the lane. Dorsey on a rose layup, got it and one. He's fouled. And it got to the point where defensively they were so good we couldn't score. And then Rose went nuts for about three or four minutes and really swung momentum to their favor. Three seconds to shoot for Memphis. They throw it into Rose. Two seconds, he shoots it. Off the glass, it went in. A three pointer. Oh, my goodness. A bank shot for three. Derrick Rose hit that fadeaway three. And that kind of shot took a lot of confidence out of you know everybody. You know it was stunning. You know because we had we had that happen all year. Guys just hit miraculous shots against us, and I immediately thought UCLA all over again. You know hitting shots at the end of the buzzer. And after a while, it just you start making minimal mistakes, and they say you know they went up nine. I said, okay, come on, guys, relax. Everybody with me. Take a deep breath. I probably said that for me as much as them. And, and uh, you know I, th I even saw a couple of guys go. Like they actually bought it. One thing we said in the huddle, just believe, you know, and, uh, and that's what guys did. We believed and we went out there and was able to make plays. 60-51, Memphis by nine. Collins headed to the circle, out to Chalmers. Guarded jump pass over to Arthur. 12-footer, goes in. Arthur scores. He's got 16. Timeout, KU. Down the stretch, body language didn't change. Shoulders weren't, you know, stooped over. Uh, no finger pointing going on. It was a probably frustration hadn't set in. It was getting close though, and but but it hadn't set in yet. And it was it was really a, a mature group of men uh, that basically all said the same thing. All we need is to get one stop and make a play. That's all we need to do, and we're right back in it. Memphis will play it in in backcourt against pressure. Rose had it stolen. Thomas inside, trying to give it to Russell. Now Collins from the corner. It's a three. A three-pointer, only their second of the game. Unbelievable steal by Sharon Collins. Sharon gets the steal, makes the shot. Next thing you know, it's manageable because it's four with a buck 50 left. And, and then the guys just said, okay, we're fine now. Collins goes out top, makes an entry pass to Durrell. Turn around. Got Big it. Shot. Two point game. The score remained 62-60 until Memphis's Derrick Rose went to the line with just over 10 seconds remaining. For the free throw, 10.8 to play. It is up. No good. It bounces out. Not over yet. Rose for the second shot. It is. Good. It's a three-point Memphis lead. Hawks need a three-point basket. 10.8, here they come. Collins, seven seconds to go in the game. Collins got pushed, falls down, Chalmers shoots. Oh! Three, the game tied, 2.1. Memphis inbounding, a half-court shot. No Unbelievable Overtime. shot. Overtime, overtime. Coined by some as Mario's miracle, it was indeed a shot that will be remembered for years to come. Well, I don't think there's any question it's the biggest shot in Kansas basketball. And up until that point, Sharon's stealing shot was probably the biggest play in, in Kansas basketball history, maybe. It, it could have been. Me, personally, I was thinking, uh, just get me the ball. I, I kind of wanted to take the shot just to, just because I was feeling a little bit. And uh, Coach said, uh, in, in, in the time, you got to perform. And I think it was a clutch time. Sharon gave me a good pass, and I had a good look, and just fortunately it went out. Two people around him right when he left his hand. I was already had my hands in the air and everybody else is nervous and I just knew it was going in, man. And next thing you know, Mario hits that big shot. And I stopped at half court, put my head down and just said thank you. And I really couldn't believe it. I was in shock. I thought it was gonna get blocked, but uh, he put enough arch on it and uh, it was in the air for a long time. It kinda looked like it curved, curved around and then just dropped in. It was a beautiful shot. 
Well, if you look at the tape, I'm on the bench, and you know, once he hits it, everybody, everybody jumps up. You know, uh, I didn't jump up because I, my heart had stopped because you know Sharon had fun with the ball, and I'm thinking my my college career is over. You know, over, over a turnover, but uh, somehow he got it to Mario, and that shot went in, and it took me it took me a second, you know, for it to hit me. You know, that that it went in, and uh, once it went in, I knew that you know we had a chance, and uh, that the pressure was shifted to them. It was a shot that will go down as one of the greatest in the history of the game. The shot brought emotions out of every fan across the country. But nowhere were those emotions more evident than in Lawrence, Kansas. Collins, seven seconds to go in the game. Collins got pushed, falls down, Chalmers shoots. Oh! Three, the game tied, 2.1. Memphis inbounding, a half court shot. No Unbelievable Overtime. shot. Overtime. Overtime. I'm like going, focus, focus. And they're like, coach, it's over. And I know it's not over. But, but there was that confidence that we caught that break we had to have. Uh, uh, and we did. You know, we caught a break. And we caught multiple breaks. Uh, but it wasn't a cocky, it's over. It's one of those deals, hey, we have labored, we have labored, labored the whole game, and now we can just go play. We huddled up when Coach Self said, let's go out here and then play hard and, and, and win this game. And, and when we went out there in overtime, uh, all the guys, me, Mario, Russell, Darrell, and Brandon, we all hold up and we just said, we're going to win this game. Can these kids join Lavella and Hoagland and Linhart and Kelly and Kenny? And 20 years ago, Manning and Piper and Pritchard and Newton and Geldner and all the rest. Out to Douglas Roberts. It's Rush. Ball knocked away. Stolen by Collins. Collins to the other end. Gives over to Rush. Who scores? Oh, what a play. What a play. Nice finish by Brandon. Collins looks to Mario. A lob oh, and a stop nice. by Arthur. Arthur out to Chalmers. Five to shoot. Off to Arthur. Arthur into Jackson. Layup. Good! Here comes Memphis. No fouls. Second to go. Hawks are in great shape. Here's a three. No good. Rebound Kansas. Noel Arthur. The Gayhawks are going to win it. Down to five seconds. Gayhawks win it in overtime. 75 to 68, KU National Champions. Is that unbelievable? Down by nine, anything's possible with this team. What a comeback. For Kansas fans, it was a win for the ages. The victory brought Kansas its third NCAA championship and fifth national title. A Kansas comeback for the history books. Rock Chalk Championship. Kansas takes the title. Uh, I want to go hug my mama first just because, uh, I mean, that's somebody that's been with me my whole life, and uh, she, she's been there for me throughout everything. I mean, I used to talk to her about being in the National Championship game one day, and uh, she always said, just believe and you're going to be there. And, uh, it was just a dream come true for us. It was unbelievable. I mean, I, I just, most of my emotions just took over me, you know. Tears coming out, I couldn't stop crying. It was, it was, it was such a great feeling. I mean, all the, all the things I've been through, you know, the five years, all the boot camps, all the hard work, it, it just all came together and just, it hit me, it hit me all at once. I know I coach many, he probably looks at it every now and then when he sees his name bolted into to the boards or the wall. And then I'm looking forward to that, just my name and, and the group of guys that came, that graduated with me and the guys that won the national championship, our names is all right there next to each other. That's one of the greatest teams in Kansas history. I can come back 10, 20 years from now with my kids and just be like, that's something that we, that me and my brothers accomplished together. And that's just a feeling that lasts a lifetime. It was, it, was, it was cool. It was a great moment. And of course, you know, just going around and hugging those guys and, and knowing that, that this, is, this is a feeling and a moment that we'll never forget. And having all the families there, and, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty remarkable. I'm so proud of you. This is going to change your life. Forever. Ask Danny how it affected him. This is memories that you, you, you're going to look back with every day of the rest of your life, and it's going to bring joy to you. And I said this before, <coughs> as a coach, winning would be unbelievable. It would be the greatest feeling, but there's a better feeling to winning and showing how tough you got to be to get it done. You guys have been blessings in everybody's life in here. We love you guys. We appreciate your effort. We are the 
not only are we the best team in America, we just made a statement that we are the best team in the richest tradition school of all time. Yeah! yeah. Love you guys. Family, one, two, three. The wind set off an unprecedented celebration in Lawrence as KU fans relish the fact that they were once again on top of the basketball world. The following day, thousands of fans waited in anticipation to pay tribute to their champions. Hey, we appreciate so much all you and these guys. Uh, they try real hard for themselves, and they try hard for their families, and they try hard for each other. But in large part, they try real hard because they feel they have an obligation and a connection to all of you. We just appreciate so much Let's go, Hawks. all your support. Yeah. It feels pretty darn good to be the nation's very best. The Jayhawk faithful filled KU's Memorial Stadium in a welcome home celebration. So let's give a Jayhawk welcome to our great head coach who did it all over the weekend, Coach Bill Self. Thank you. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at a loss. <clears throat> I think uh, I speak for our team that this is totally overwhelming. I told our administration, let's just have it in Allen Fieldhouse. Surely it won't be 15,000 show up. But you guys are the most loyal, best fans, and I can't imagine there being any place that's better to coach or play at than the University of Kansas. You know, we were, we were talking the other day, and we told our guys that they're the winningest team in 110-year history of Kansas basketball. Think about that. All the great teams, this is the winningest team. And if we beat Memphis on Monday, that makes you the greatest team in the history of this school, and that is unbelievable. But uh, like I said on senior night, I was going to be back here giving a speech, and here I am. Everything happened for a reason. Rod Stewart gave us all the motivation in the world. We are not wonder for him. So give it up for Rock. Like I said, we all gonna enjoy this moment together. You know, we love you. We know you love us. So uh, have fun. Rock Chalk Jack Jayhawk. <laughs> I was asked earlier, just a few minutes ago, could it get any better? It could be if we win another one in 2009. Thanks for everything.
The celebration continued later that week with an epic parade that drew over 100,000 people to downtown Lawrence. The pride and the excitement of the thousands of Jayhawk fans was evident as they showered their champions with cheers and high fives for miles throughout the parade. The 2007-2008 championship team will be remembered as one of the best teams in the storied history of the program and their accomplishments will add to the legend. Will add to the pride. Will add to the banners. And will add to the fabric of the premier college basketball program in the country. Jayhawks win it in overtime. 75 to 68 KU national champions.